are now live. I love that that happens and that we have these conversations because you get to see the behind the scenes. Uh, I'm live with my friend Katrina Malone, and she is such a valuable asset. If you have children and you are wanting to learn a little bit more about parenting, I certainly am. I want to be the best parent that I can be because I recognize that how we parent develops our children into the adults that they are. Um, so Katrina is a relationship development intervention consultant, and I wrote it down because I didn't want to get it wrong. But what I love about her is that she helps families create a better dynamic where everybody is thriving and feels loved and supported. And she's so great at that. And, and every time I catch one of her live videos, I'm like, oh my God, I got to write notes. Like, oh my God, that's the information I need today. Like, thank you so much. So if you guys aren't following her and you have children, you should. Uh, she is very, very knowledgeable and uh, she's going to tell you a little bit about herself and uh, and what she does. Hey, thanks so much for having me. I am, You're welcome. I am honored and I love that you find value in, in what I have because sometimes, honestly, I forget what is common knowledge to me is not common knowledge to everyone else. It is not. And, and, and it's a good reminder and I guess the first thing I want to say is that, like, my title sounds scary. <laughs> Relationship development intervention. Intervention <laughs> sounds scary. It sounds like something's broken. You know, like, when you think of intervention, you're like, we need to have an intervention. Yeah, yeah. You think of it as something, like, very negative that everybody is coming against you for. Yeah, and it's, it's not. It's not broken. It's not. It's just not working the best way we know how or that it could be. It could be better, but it's not broken. I love it. I love that you clarified that because, you know, we all just have, we all come from different backgrounds and different family upbringings. Then you get married and you've got two people that came from different backgrounds, right? And di different ideals of parenting, different values, different morals. And then now you're trying to raise kids together. And then those kids come with their own personalities and they show up in a way that maybe you don't expect or isn't in alignment with your personality. And you've got to learn a little bit of patience. So that's something that, um, you know, I know that you wanted to talk about. Let's talk about how, how to, find patience when things are a little stressful because that that's the number one thing when I throw the question out there as a parent what is the number one thing you wish you could change I wish I had more patience oh yeah and it, and it's one of those things that that you catch right you're like oh I'm yelling again oh why did that why did that pick at me the way it did so I really want to I wanted to step in and talk about like patience is really is a muscle yeah. It's a mindfulness piece. Yeah. It's something you practice. Yes. And when I first have parents start doing this kind of stuff, it's like, and, and I'm sure we'll get into this later, is that you're, you know there's certain times where, where you're going to be triggered or that it's going to happen. You're like, I know right. he's going to struggle with math. He's going to shut down. This is going to go, I'm going to get frustrated. Like you already know. So that's a point in time when you're like, okay, I'm going to be really present and be like, in the moment, I understand you're frustrated. And, and, and maybe walk your, like, we actually talk about, like, in this situation, how can we approach it? Yeah. What part of this math is hard? Is it the numbers? No, it's not the numbers. Is it the process? No. Okay. Is it that it's too much? Oh, Okay. Well, how can we break it down? How can we do smaller chunks? Do you need a break? And and sometimes, like, honestly, sometimes it's the, the numbers on the pages are going like this. For them, yeah. For them, yeah. right? So, so yeah. until we get curious and ask, we don't know. I love that. See clarity in the situation, right? I, I think that that is something that adults should do in general when they have a disagreement or an argument or something happens with somebody else. Seek clarity and get curious. Ask questions. I know sometimes when Izzy has a tantrum and is upset and frustrated about something, I'll be like, what are you mad about? And she won't be able to tell me, ex I'm just mad. I'm just mad. Okay, then you be mad. We can sing the mad song. And right. then are you mad because dad told you to wear that to school today? Are you mad because you want to watch five more minutes of TV? Are you mad because you don't feel like brushing your teeth this morning? Like, what is it that is frustrating you? Yeah. And if you, you know, it is really difficult as a parent to take that deep breath and present those questions in a very calm, yeah. soothing voice. Because you're like, I got to get in the car in three minutes or we're going to be late. <laughs> 
And so, yeah. you know, um, when you lead kids through that question, like you basically get the parent to breathe, right? Like take yeah. a second for yourself to center and yeah. then get curious about what they're upset about. And, and reminding yourself that being five minutes late, like what it reminding yourself of your priorities is your child the priority oh. or that thing in five minutes? Is it really that important? Like, because I, I have parents who get on their Zoom calls and stuff with me late all the time. And I'm like, no problem. Life happens. I understand. And, and I want them to make that child a priority and that relationship a priority. And I think the other place that we need to go with when we talk about patience, patience comes from a place of being calm yourself. Yes. So that self-care piece, the piece of building that relationship and being on the same page as your partner, not feeling so rushed, all those other things, feeling connected and having friendships, all those things actually do lead you to be in a place of like, oh, I can have patience. I can take a breath. Yeah. Because right? your anxiety levels aren't already up to here. Right. And you didn't, I mean, and that can be really difficult for a parent that's working full time, by the way, comes home at five 30 or six o'clock walks into chaos at dinner and, and the kids, I know there's witching hour, <laughs> right? That's what we call it, witching hour. Angry sucks. <sighs> and so it's difficult for you to do that, but maybe you can prepare yourself in the car before you walk into the house. Well, and, and come and join our group. Yes. I have a free Facebook parent group and we talk about all the things that stress you out and how we can either change them up or reframe them. Like a lot of time, like you say, that struggle around dinner, planning this, um, you can, you can reframe it as I'm going to take it the least amount of time. I'm going to order a box chef, whatever in I'm right. Or you can reframe it and look at it as, okay, this is time I'm going to spend with my kids. And this actually is a really great lead into what I wanted to cover is the first foundation. Yes. Of, that it's really the quality and quantity of time you spend with your children. So building in my first go-to is the dinner table. No electronics at the dinner table. You eat dinner together as a family at least five nights a week. And there is so much more than just eating happening at the table. Everyone has a place at the table. Everyone has a say, hopefully, at the table. Right? That really bonds you as a family. Yeah, it does. Right? And, and so many people don't do it anymore. They eat in front yeah. of the TV and they don't connect. And that was always a priority in our family. We always eat dinner together. And, 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 that, and that seemed foreign to me because I grew up in a family like you where dinner was non-negotiable. Right. You yeah. At yeah. the table and you're yeah. Even when my dad was came home at seven o'clock at night, we would have a snack and eat dinner as a family at seven because that that was the only time we saw him. He worked afternoon shift. That's right. That's right? right. But we and I so and I want to express that these don't have to be long periods of time, but make family game night a priority. Yeah. Make even and start when they're young. But if they're older, it's not too late to start. I remember camping every weekend with my family. We were gone September, like May through September. We were camping every weekend, but you don't have to do that. It can be like once a month, you make a regular outing that you plan together. It could be meal planning together, making as many of those everyday activities and having the kids join you. Building life skills, great. But the biggest thing is, is the conversations you are going to have well, putting away the laundry, well, cutting up the vegetables and, and give them age appropriate things that they can do. Maybe your youngest only sets the table and stirs the pot. Totally, totally. Maybe someone just reads the instructions of the new meal they wanted to try. It's, it's just having that because the more you build that feeling of a cohesion of a group of being part of something bigger than yourself. Mm -hmm. when it comes to homework, when it comes to chores, when it comes, they're going to be way more likely to do it because they already are bonded. Mm -hmm. They already feel a part of something that they want to be a part of. Wow. I never thought about it that way. You know, it's really interesting because I have the perfect example for this. 
Um, when I do live videos, if Izzy's home, she knows that I'm working, but yeah. she hears me talking and then she comes. Right. And so I was like, Oh, like, you know, I've already set you up. I've already talked to you about yeah. what I'm doing. And like, you're going to have snacks and watch TV. No, in she comes. And so I said, after a, a video that I was very distracted on, I said to her, you know, that I'm doing work. Why do you keep coming in when I've asked you not to? I'm present with you after I'm present with you before. What is it that, that you want? I said, do you like watching? And she's like, no. I'm like, oh, do you want, do you want to be in a video? And she's like, yeah, I want to do a video with you. And I'm like, okay. So that Sunday, I am not a chef, but Izzy loves cooking in the kitchen with Ryan. So you may have seen that video of me crying because I'm cutting onions because I'm not a chef. And she's in there and she thinks she's having the greatest time. She's so happy. And, and the next day she goes, can we make another soup? And so it, it made me recognize that she didn't want, you know, the tasks of our daily life. She wanted to do something special with me and she wanted to be involved in my life. And, and that, it, like, right that there. Mommy everything. makes videos all the time. I want to make videos too. Yeah. And I didn't understand. I didn't, I just thought, oh, she's just being a nuisance or she is very smart and she'll come in and she'll ask me for a chocolate when I'm live. because <laughs> She knows that I'm like, here it is. Just get out of here. Right. Like, <laughs> so she's really smart. She knows when to ask for things. She probably learned that from me. Yeah. Um, but you know, I, I just, I very much value. And I hope that you don't mind that I share that example oh, that's totally fine. Um, because it really, it makes sense to me that if you really get curious, you understand what they need from you. And, and if, you can make time for that. The bonding that happens, like you said, it's not just about time. It's about quality time. So yeah. let's talk a little bit about that being present. Yeah. It's, it's one of those things. Like the, the other thing that when we talk about being present and stuff and during all those oppor um, those opportunities to connect, like peeling and stuff, I want to touch on the whole growth mindset thing. Please, please. By yeah. being able to model your thoughts. I talk about declarative language, which is a big word for thinking out loud, right, right, uh, helping guiding them to solve their own problems. But I also be like, man, I don't know how to do this. <laughs> it's the peeler. It's not working. It's not. It's like it's got a rut. I wonder how I'm going to fix that. But modeling my thought process oh, helps God. them troubleshoot next time they come up to something. Oh, well, mom tried these six different ways when she had a peeler issue. When I have this issue at school, there might be more than one way to answer it. Yes. And here's I some strategies that. I can use. And it's, it's just being th that piece of being present and aware of where your child is. Like in what I do, I, we do a lot of video recording. So they do an interaction and recording. And even when I do it with the kids, I work with some one-on-one -on -one, and I look back on that video and there's times where I'm like, wow, I didn't even notice that they made that face or did that thing. But if I had been looking at them or, or with them, I would have read that and been like, oh, I see you don't understand or oh, you really like that or like being able to navigate better the the challenge or the situation just by being present and being able to read their body language. Yeah, absolutely. And understand that their words aren't necessarily like it's, it's the language that they have. Like I know when Izzy asked me to go for sushi, it's not that she wants sushi. It's that she wants a date with me and to spend time talking to me. Yes. Right. And so it's understanding that those are underlying things that they need. You know, she was home for the Christmas holiday, obviously, and she's a very social kid. And she said before she left uh, the first day back to school, she's like, I didn't really like being home. <laughs> and I said, OK, tell me why you didn't like being home. And she said, well, I didn't get to see my grandma and grandpa. I didn't get to see my cousins. Mm -hmm. I didn't get to go to the pool. I didn't get to go to the park. All the things that are fun and exciting for a kid. And so I, you know, you have to learn how to communicate at their language, you yeah. know, at that, at their level, which by the way, is negotiating at a different level at all times because yes. it's perfect. <laughs> Right. Yes. And so you, once we realized that she was smarter than she let on, we started talking to her more like an adult right. and then asked her to ask for clarity when she didn't understand something. So we ask her for clarity all the time. Yeah. And I said to her, OK, what was it that you didn't like? all of these things. Well, we did puzzles. We had family movie nights where we wore yeah. our jammies all day. We went and we, you know, we went and saw Christmas lights. And these were the things that we had to do because we couldn't do the other things. So we really tried to, to make it fun for you. And I hope that that was okay. I know how much you love your friends. And yeah. she said, 
yeah, it was okay, but I'm really looking forward to going back to school. Fair enough. And and I appreciate that she's a social kid and that she yeah. wants that, but it's a different conversation than you, like that her saying that and me being like, really? Like you should be so lucky. That yeah. You I went out of my life. way and I right? did all this. Yeah. Right? And so it's explaining at their level what they can understand. So let's, I, I love that you talked about the dinner analogy and cooking together. So where does that lead in? I know that you've got some really great tips for picky eaters, <laughs> which I think so many people like the, the, the things that you talk about are things that we deal with on a daily basis so so it goes back to that that get them involved get them involved at the very beginning levels of like meal planning get it and get curious what is it that you don't like is it the texture is it the feel is it the the taste is it the combination some you will be surprised how many kids can't have their food touching oh interesting and other ones are like nope gonna mush it all together and put applesauce on so i don't taste anything (laughs) but applesauce Whatever you got to do to get those Brussels sprouts down, you do it. You do it. I love it. That's such <laughs> but, an interesting perspective. Right? Because I, I do have kids that like, are like, they're like, nope, can't touch. And, but it's, it's like that piece of like, okay, we'll do some meal planning. Spend some time watching fun little YouTubes if they're young on the importance of, of certain foods. When you're picking out, when you're peeling the carrots. Oh, carrots are really great for your eyesight. Talking about how... Um, food is the fuel for your body and some fuel works better than others. You can talk about the sugar crash. I get lots of energy and then I go. Yeah. And And that doesn't feel very good. Yeah. And then I can't concentrate at school. And then I I don't do well on my spelling test because I can't focus or whatever that might. Sure. Sure. Absolutely. And make it applicable to their life. When your friend wants to play and he doesn't want to do what you're doing and you don't have any patience is because your sugar level just went. Absolutely. And I think, I I don't know, I would love your opinion on this, but I, I, you know, my husband and I have talked about um, drugs and alcohol and how to educate her on that because, you know, she knows that alcohol is for adults, um, drugs, you know, and I, I, I really, I don't know. Again, I would like your opinion because my mom always raised me. She never said no. She educated me instead. And so she never said, no, don't do drugs or, or don't drink alcohol. Because what do you do when your parents say, no, you go do that thing. Right. And that much more enticing. Exactly. And so what I'm listening to and what I'm hearing you say is educating your kids on the good and the bad. Right. So you could do that for drugs and alcohol as well. Educate them on the bad things and say, hey, as an adult, if you decide to partake in this, this is fine. But here are the like, you know, liver disease and like a heart disease and all of these things that could happen to you. So you need to be aware of that. And and the other the other the other key piece that I will throw in there is is that. It's your choice. And if you make that choice, I am not going to get upset with you. If you find you're drunk in a situation and you can't get home, I'm coming in three minutes. No questions asked. You know, like you already know the consequences of your actions. Right. Oh, that's so good. Right. That was your choice. But uh, and you learned from that choice is like, I learned that really uh, I learned really young, my, I thought I was being responsible and had a DD lined up and I, and I was, that DD decided to drink. I didn't feel safe. Mom, can you come get me? But I had a relationship with my parents where they said, you know, the consequences, I will not buy the liquor for you. Mm -hmm. I will not. But if you find yourself in a situation, your dad and I will be there. We will pick up your vehicle. If that may be the case. No questions asked. I don't care where you are, what's happening at the house. We're there. Yeah. And it was never brought up again. It was like, because partly because they knew me as a, as, as a kid, I was really hard on myself anyway. They didn't need to be any harder. My dad would look at me and say, I'm very disappointed. And that would be game over. Right. Totally. (laughs) Totally. Whereas you, you say that to one of my nephews and they'd be like, meh. Yeah. (laughs) I know the language has changed, right? Like whenever my mom would say that, I'm really disappointed in you. I wish she would have said, I'm really disappointed in your actions. Yeah, (laughs) But you know, that was, she could, she could be angry. She could be yelling at me. But as soon as she said that, I I was like, and I was like, oh God, oh, I'm not going to do that again. Like, you know, and so 
we use those things psychologically and whatever, but I really, one thing that I very much value that you just said is like, this is your choice yeah. because what happens if you don't make it your kid's choice, if you don't empower them to make their own decisions, it creates a, I, I know it creates a lot of problems in your adulthood. It ta- creates a ton of problems. And even, even, even starting really young, being like, I don't want to wear my coat. That's your choice. I'm going to suggest that you bring your coat with you because I think you're going to get cold. But if you get cold, you are not getting my coat. Right. And being or, very, um, having boundaries and like explaining the outcome yeah. before it happens. Or I, or even if you're really worried about them being cold, I'm going to take your coat and put it in the trunk just in case. Then they might have to go back and get that jacket later, depending on how far you are and how long you're going to be out. Right. That's your judgment call as a parent. But, but very early on, giving them as many choices, educating them, like you say, on both sides of the story, it's your choice. You, you had a play date. You don't feel like playing. That's your choice. But this is the impact it will have on your friend. Yes. Be yeah. aware that they might be disappointed. They might not ask you to play because they don't think they can count on you. Um. They, they also could be okay. They could be like, yeah, no problem. We'll play another day. Got a, three other friends I could play with, whatever that might be. Right. right. But, but giving them some perspective because especially at a young age, they, they can't, they just haven't had enough experience to have experienced enough of other people's ex- um, to have, to pull yeah, on, to yeah, have the wisdom, yeah, to make the That's choice. The I know. I say that all. T- I so I say that all the time to Izzy. I'm like, I know that you want this, but I've been around the sun a few more times than you, and I know what the outcome of that is. And so this is going to be what happens. Do you still want to do that? If you do, then that's fine. So let's talk a little bit. This is the perfect kind of segue into um, when you do have to discipline your children and give them some sort of punishment. How do you decide what that punishment is? For lack of better words, because I don't actually. I'm sorry that punishment is a bad word, but I don't know how to say it. it, Well, and even like the way I say that the the crime, the consequence fits the crime. But really, if you take a, a Dr. Green approach to things of, Children do well when they can, and when they can't, they're missing either knowledge or a skill. Right. So you want to make, in any of those points, that's a good place to come back to that patience piece, being like, in this moment, what, what skill are they lacking, or what knowledge are they lacking, and how best do I teach them that in this moment? Yes, yes. So I'm going to throw out a couple examples, because I think this right. is the best way to do this. Um, actually something came back a few months ago. A mom was like, money's going missing. Neither of my kids are going to, are fussing up. I don't know where it's gone. It's really frustrating. And she's like, I tried taking iPads away or I tried. And I'm like, but the consequence doesn't fit the crime. Next time you're out at soccer and they want a snack on the way home. I'd really like to be able to buy you a snack, but money keeps going missing. So I don't, I don't have the extra money right now to buy a snack. You're going to have to wait till we get home. That's so think, like coming back to another example would be like a kid wearing a hel- not wearing his helmet when he goes out on his bike, educate them. Or, or first, first I was like, ah, oh, I know it's sometimes hard to remember. I understand that you might've just forgot probably right. not, but I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt. Right. <laughs> and, and you can explore. I wonder why you forgot or why maybe it comes up. It wasn't cool. Um, an excuse I get sometimes is like, well, I'm not on the road. I'm not going to be road pizza. Well, <laughs> and you can, fair enough. Like, yeah. let's talk about what happens when you're going down the trail and you hit a tree. Right. Like, and explore other YouTubes or whatever your child will relate to. The other one is like, I'm sorry, I can't trust you. I really need you to wear your helmet because I need you to be safe. And I can't trust you to do that. So for the next month, your bike's going to be locked to mine and I hold the key. You need to show me you have your helmet on first before you can have your bike. Yes. And don't be feel bad about that. I think some people feel bad about uh, disciplining their kids in a certain way. And as long as you're not hurting them and you're teaching, like you're, you're teaching, you're creating a habit. I ride my bike. I get my helmet. Yeah. I'll be reinforcing that 21 days of practice. Hey, what about <laughs> the way I look at it? Clean up their toys. What are you going to do if they don't clean up their toys? Well, <laughs> honestly, depends where the toys are. Yeah. 
if the toys are in the room, I'm going to shut the door. You have to live in it, not me. Right. That's a great, that's a great advice. Doesn't bother me any. It also, it, like, a laundry is another one that my sister did, caught on really early to, and I'm, I actually use this one all the time. If the laundry can't make it in the hamper, I can't do it. Oh, that's a great one. I don't have any underwear. Man, I wonder where it all is. It didn't make it to the hamper. <laughs> it, wasn't in, it wasn't in the laundry basket. I don't know. Um, but going back to, like, if, if the toys are... In a common area? In a common area, um, there's a couple of things I can do. I have had a couple of families who don't have neurotypical children. So these are, these are ADHD children who move on really fast. And so we've actually made a lending li library. You have to give me something back before you get the next thing. Oh, I like that. And actually doing that for, it seems, it's tedious. It's time consuming first to get all the containers and organize it and, and to put that time in to be constantly like, but after a month of it, we had rewritten that impulse. He now has the habit of when I'm done this, I clean it up and I get the next thing. We don't have to monitor that cupboard anymore. That's so smart. They can do it on their own. It was just rewiring that, that habit loop. Right. 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 Absolutely. And teaching them a new habit. You know, it's hard to, yeah. it's hard to quit something as adults, as kids, it's hard to quit something, but if you can intervene and put a new habit in place of that old habit and just teach them a new habit, that pathway is a lot easier than saying yeah. you can't do that or you can't have any more toys if you don't clean them up. Right. Well, and, like, and like, I think I, I remember some parents, I don't ever think my mom did it. Maybe she did threaten, but they were like, if I find your toys, I'm going to throw them all away. Right, right. Like, I think that generation did that. Right? And I'm pretty sure that you, I think mom might have, but they went into the attic. We definitely didn't see them for a while, but we did see them again. <laughs> but, you are, but you're creating trauma around it. Yes. Rather than teaching them a new skill. I didn't clean, I didn't learn to clean up. I just learned that my mom was mean and that now I didn't have my favorite toys. And that, do you know what I mean? You just... You put a block in your relationship instead of a trust, a trust and a, like an understanding. You just cut off communication right there. And I don't so care what you think. I don't care how you feel. You didn't clean up your mess. End of end of conversation. And it's so hard because maybe we were raised that way and we think oh. that's how you're supposed to raise your kids, exactly. right? You think, well, my parents said that to me. I can say it to them. But what I've- I turned out okay. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah, right? And then you're like, did I? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now, well, how many things have I had to push, like work through in my, my adult years that I didn't really- it's, it's, it's so part of it. And, and that's why I appreciate conversations like this, because it just gives you a different perspective that you may not have seen. And what I've learned over the past five years is generational trauma. And I don't mean like generational trauma as in abuse or alcoholism oh. or whatever, like it can come in that way, but it can just be, have it, Lou. It can be sub, subtle things, subtle little things that, that you pick up from your parents that you now pass on to your kids that can be detrimental because you just were unaware. Yeah, you didn't know any different. So no, the no, only way you don't we beat yourself up that. over it either, right? Because yeah. I've learned that, like, now that you know better, you do better, right? You get a piece of information today yeah. that you're like, oh, I always take my kids' toys away. I should start doing this instead. And often, this is what comes into play. You have to commit to the time because yeah. people will be like, that's, oh, that's so much work for me. You know what? Your kids are a long-term investment is what your You're kids running are. running a marathon here, not a sprint. Absolutely. And this is the best long and long-term investment. Like this, like she is, she, she's something that I, I want to, like, I want her to be confident. I want her to know that she's capable yeah. of anything. I want to infuse her with these values so she doesn't ever feel less than or have any self-limiting beliefs. And the other thing is, she's going to pay for your long-term care facility. Yeah! You want a good one. <laughs> Absolutely. I, and so she saying, still loves me. <laughs> or maybe, like we tell my mom, we're just going to put her in the little, um, we're going to buy some land and she can have her small house, her tiny home yeah, yeah. on the corner, and we'll check in on her on occasion. There you go. Perfect. She come for dinner whenever she wants. I love it. But you have to think about that long term. Like, what yeah. do you want your life? What do you want your relationship to be with your kids in your adult life? What do you want or, that to look like? Or like when I when I when I talk about because there's a lot of helicopter parents out there, not meaning to mel really well meaning parents. Yes. Yes. But I have to remind them that okay, so he might slice his finger with a knife. 
But when he's 30, he needs to make his own dinner. Yeah. <laughs> it would be better that we teach him how to swim. I mean, that's a, that's a really big exaggeration, but sometimes it's a good reminder. Like when they're 21 and living on their own, what skills do they need to be able to do? Both physically and mentally. What They must be able to overcome problems. They must be able to to take perspective. They must be able to, like you say, come from that place of curiosity or even that growth mindset of like, well, what did I learn from that? How can I make it better? Not I'm horrible person. I'm, I'm bad. I can't do this. What did I learn from that? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And like, that's, you think about the difference between, uh, you know, a a parent that can deal with tantrums and take a breath to another parent that would be yelling at their kids to shut up and get upstairs or like go to your room or whatever it is in that moment. And there's a completely different path and different relationship you're going to have with that parent. If that's the case. I've got a really great example for you. I, I I was going to pick up a little guy. There's a lot of trauma going on at home. Parents are getting divorced. I went to pick him up from his speech path more for helping the family. This is what they need at this time. They didn't have care for him. I happened to have a spot available. I show up at the, at the speech paths. He's three. He's tired. It's 1130. He's hungry. He's really confused and yeah. has no words. Yeah. I go to pick him up. He's shocked because it's me and not a parent. Right. He's like, I love you. I like you, but why are you here? Right. He curls up in a little ball, refuses to put on his shoes and just, just hides away. Buddy, I know you're tired. I know you're really hungry. I'm wondering how we're going to get to the car. Kind of looks up at me. Are we going to fly like Superman? Because he really loves Avengers. Are we going to run like Flash? No, none of this works. So I sit there for 25 minutes. I hear you're upset. I'm just going to be here when you're ready, okay? And then it occurs to me. Buddy, do you miss dad? Do you think that maybe we should swing by the shop and give dad a hug before we go? Okay, dude, let's do it, okay? Do you want to put your shoes on or do you want me to carry you? Okay, let's go. And the, and the, and the lady looks at me and she's like, are you really going to take him? Yeah, I am. I no. will never make a promise that I will not keep. No. I, I will not break that bond. So we went to see dad, gave a big hat, big ass hug. Mm. Loves you in his own way, his movies. Mm. And then we could go on our way. Dad could finish his job. But it was that place of like, it took me 25 minutes of being like, he's really upset and just being present and like just me breathing. Yes, that helps so much. And just being very audible about my breathing, eventually he came down. And then when I could, when I could put my finger on what was actually the root problem, because I could have bribed him with Smarties. Sure. I could have, right? But that, that would have just been a Band-Aid. It wouldn't have solved the problem. So it's, it's building that trust. And I realize not everyone has 25 minutes to, to sit there with their, with their three-year-old. Well, they, they come down. But sometimes that's what it takes. And making that a priority yeah. it is, is huge. And like I said, like keeping your word, they got to know they can trust you. Don't make promises you can't keep. That also goes for your consequences. Don't make consequences you can't follow up on. Yeah. Don't threaten. I couldn't agree more. Um, So one of the, one of the comments here is choices are golden, but what if, what if choices don't work? Like Izzy the other day, she, she wanted, uh, she wanted Smarties or actually no. So she wanted jelly beans. And I said, well, Izzy, maybe it's time that you start doing things to earn jelly beans. And so I said, you know, I, I will give you some jelly beans if you pick up your toys in the living room. Uh, you know, we'll do it together and whatever. Yeah. Well, I, and she goes, well, I'd prefer if you just gave me jelly beans. <laughs> I'm like, fair enough. Right. Like, I'm just like, I don't have a, I don't, I don't have a comeback for that because I'm like, I get it. <laughs> like, but, and, and you're allowed, you've given her a choice. The choice yeah. is you can clean up your toys and have jelly beans. How important are those jelly beans to you? Yeah, totally. If you don't want them, then it's fine. It, it's the same thing for you. If you choose not to show up at work, you don't get paid. Right. 
Right. I mean, if you have well, a nice job, <laughs> that's but, different. you know what I mean? But if you chose not to show up consistently okay. and do what you do, yep. the paychecks mm-hmm. wouldn't be coming in. That's right. You wouldn't be where you are today if you hadn't been consistent and put the time in. Yeah. So it's being, it's sticking to those choices in that moment yeah. and not giving them a third choice. Yeah. Not giving them a third choice. Yeah. Well, I hear that you don't want to clean up your toys. You jelly beans must not be that important. And maybe that was the wrong thing to bribe her with because it wasn't associated to the cleaning up. Like I try and think about that, right? Like maybe jelly beans should be, well, if you eat your dinner, then you can have the jelly beans as dessert. Like I have no, you know, I'm trying to be consistent in what I do, but I just, yeah, love but it also has to be motivating. Like what, yeah. what could we be motivating for cleaning up your toys? That yeah, isn't a constant, it? like that isn't a negative. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Such a positive thing. Like, don't get me wrong. Bribes are not horrible. We go to work every day so that you get paid so you can do what you want. Absolutely. Life is a bribe. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it is. there's no other way to put it. Yeah. You're Some absolutely- bribes are better than others. If we can intrinsically bribe them, the better. If we can intrinsically motivate them to do things. But sometimes we need a little extrinsic, extrinsic help. I could, yeah, I totally agree with you. Would you, is there anything else that like you see come up very, like quite often that are like very typical in families that they sleep. struggle with? Is there anything else? No? Bedtime. Bedtime. Sleep. Oh yeah. Sleep bedtime is the something sleep. else. I, they're like, it went really well. And then it just stopped happening. They just refused to go to bed there. So the first thing I ask is, are they overtired? This mm-hmm. usually happens about six when they're going back to school. Now their their brains are exhausted after six hours at school. As far as I'm concerned, kindergarten should only be half days. Right. Right? Like, that's a lot. And don't even get me started on the curriculum. Let's not even go there. Um, <laughs> I have some really strong thoughts about what should be taught in kindergarten, and it is not the one, one plus ones in ABCs. Um, I, I, and I think that I'm on the same page as you. <laughs> <laughs> um, but... The other one is like, when it comes to sleep, there's like, are they getting enough exercise during the day? Are they burning the energy or are they just still ready to go? Tonight? Yeah. What are you feeding them for snack? Or are you feeding them for snack? Because sometimes kids are actually waking up hungry because they haven't had protein or a complex hydro- yes. carbohydrate yeah. late enough in the day. Right. Um, how much have they had to drink? Getting up to go pee is hard to fall asleep. Yeah. How dark is their room? The biggest one, and parents hate it when I say this, is that bedtime routine. Yeah. At least an hour, I prefer after dinner. But if it's doable, an hour before bed, there is no screens. Mm -hmm. There is no high energy activities. Mm -hmm. Lots of families find a bath. Whether they are clean or not doesn't matter. It's actually getting in the bath and a little lavender. That just like... You can get into a routine, any kind of routine that would signal that child and keep it consistent the same time every night. I don't even care on the weekends. More often than not, I can't say that it'll be perfect, but more often than not, get them to bed at the same time. Yeah. Because their rhythm needs to be like, oh, uh, maybe some families play a game. So they play a game and then that, that the child just automatically knows that after the game, I brush my teeth. Right. We read a story. This so their their brain is almost triggered to start um, the melatonin and the other things that start calming them down. Yes, and it's it's triggered in their system, and then it, it's just way easier to do. Um, gratitude before bed is my favorite one because then they end on a good note. I love that they have happy thoughts and happy dreams when they're focusing because so many of the kids I work with get stuck in all the horrible things that they think happened in the day. Not necessarily were they horrible, but that's how they perceived them. Totally. Right. They got focused on them. So what are, what are three things that went really well today? What made you smile today? And just doing that before bed, just getting them into that place of, and granted, this isn't going to work for all of them. Melatonin is a real thing. Um, It's not something I go to right away. If you like, we try a lot of other things first. Right. Um, but some kids, especially if they have ADHD, melatonin is not something they produce on their own. Right. No matter how hard we try. Um, also, some some kids need that 
fast speed to calm themselves. So I'm like blue light glasses. Let's, let's, let's not trigger the stimulation, but they still get that movement that they need. Yeah, that's um, so important. Or shifting from shifting from online like videos and YouTubes to or or videos to an audiobook to um, Insight Timer is one of my favorites. Zach and the cat go to space. Lamest story ever, but I have never had a child ever not fall asleep to that story. Oh, cool! Well, I'm I will be getting that book today on Amazon. <laughs> oh, it's not, it's not even a book. It's a, it's a free meditation on the Insight Timer. I didn't know that. You'll have to send me the link because I'm not okay. sure how that works, but I would like to look into it for sure. I they have a beautiful one about unicorns too that I'm sure Izzy would love. She would love that. Her last library book was a unicorn book. So I think yes. that that would be awesome. And like having those, having those tools in your back pocket for the days that things are not working yeah. or, you know, the days that you have frustration or the days that you're just like, I'm too tired to do this because it happens as parents. Like we are human. It's okay. You make the My eyes are going to go cross-eyed if I have to read a story. When you're like, it's 7 PM and you're just like, Oh my God, <laughs> like, is it please bedtime? There, yes. you know, there are moments like that. They're, that they're real. They are. They have been they're normal. They're normal for people. One of the things that I, I want to mention really quickly is something that I learned from my therapist. Cause I think that everybody should have a therapist. Um, but yeah, when, we eat, when we eat dinner together, uh, she, she says it's, it's part of the four rivers. And so if you want to connect with your partner, you want to connect with your kids, you ask them these four questions, what challenged you today? So to yes. your kids, what was hard today? What touched you today? What made you feel love today? what surprised you today? And then I got to remember it. So challenged, surprised, loved, so touched. And then there's one more I have to remember. Challenged, surprised, touched, um, inspired. What inspired mm. you today? And I when like you that. ask those four questions, not only can you connect with your partner in 10 minutes and you both ask each other those questions because that'll tell you a lot about their day. But when you ask your kids that, what was hard for you today? What made your heart happy today? What surprised you? What did, and, and so it's, you'll be like, Oh, I, I, you know, I found a snail on a rock at the, at the park, you know, and that was so cool, you know? And so you get to hear the important parts about their day. Yeah. And that will shift because again, you build trust in those moments you hear, yeah. you know, and, and then she gets to hear, you know, what challenged you today? Well, you know what? I had a really challenging person that I was talking to today and I had to figure out a way uh, to communicate better with them. You know what I mean? And so she learns the things that are tough for us that we work through as well. And you're teaching your kids communication, problem solving, vulnerability, all of these yeah. incredible gifts that you give them as, as kids. No, exactly. Like that's one actually, it's one of the things I highly recommend. Um, I'm going to, I like yours better because the big life journal talks oh, I about love that. Like, having the, the talk about the three things, what made you smile? What was super exciting or that you learned that's new? What was one thing that made you go, huh? Or that was challenging. And, and then if they're at the state, what could we do about it? Ooh, I, like I wonder, I wonder how we could make that easier or what did you learn from that? That's something that you taught me actually, is that when you want to engage your child, ask them to teach you something. Oh yes. Oh yes. Right? Like they if you love to be the teacher. It's so cool. And it's shifted our relationship because instead of me talking to her and teaching, and I'm always teaching her, it's so cool to have her teach me something at her, like at her understanding, you yes. know? at her level of understanding, it's very cool. And you and, and it gives you a good, it actually helps me ground myself in how I communicate to them. At what level am I communicating to them? Because I've come back with one little girl who was like telling me all this stuff about um, where poop goes down the toilet and how it ends up feeding the grass, which was really interesting. But like she'd walk me through this and I realized that she really comprehends so much more than I was giving her credit for. <laughs> No kidding. No kidding. Like, wow, Storybots is cool. <laughs> what else does Storybots teach you? I love Storybots, Mathbots, and it was so funny. Izzy, you know, if you guys want your kids to start eating things that are different, get them to watch Caillou. Because Ryan was like, I asked Ryan, I had a really busy day and Izzy was home. And I said, how was your day? He's like, I made snacks all day. And I was like, oh, okay. And, and then I sat down and I was watching Caillou with Izzy for five minutes to cuddle because she asked me to cuddle yeah. with her. And 
what do they teach on Caillou? How to try new foods, how to right. try new things. And so she's like asking for ice cream with honey. She's asking for crackers with peanut butter. She's asking for celery with whatever, right? Like it was just so funny. And so he didn't realize that she was learning over there. Right. What, you know, maybe I could try that too. Maybe, yeah. that's, you know, and so there are really great programs like that or Daniel Tiger or things that are teaching life lessons. Franklin, and Franklin is such a good one, you know, so there are really great programs that if your kids are going to watch TV because we do yeah. have TV in our household it's gonna happen let them make sure that they're watching something good because sometimes I'll walk in there and she's watching anime and I'm like no here's here are the things that you're allowed to watch and the things that I want you to watch because and there's there's even there's even shows where I've had families cut off being like high school monster high or something like that I'm like yeah those attitudes gotta go even my little ponies some days I'm like oh no no nope. story my little ponies of my day was way calmer than my little ponies nowadays yeah and so if you can manage you know if your kids are watching an hour a couple of hours of tv a day if you can manage what they're watching and and intentionally put them in front of things that are going to build their character or help them you know overcome yeah. or think differently and, then. and if they are super into a show that you don't think is quite so great sit down and watch it with them and explain why this isn't real or why this is not the way we would do you know what I mean? Oh, like, yeah, yeah. Our friends won't respond very well when we do that. I had a little girl who's like, "Talk to the hand," and I'm like, "Oh, that made me feel really yucky." I'm yeah. not sure your friends would like that. I know that it sounds funny in the show, but in real life, they probably won't like that. And I love that you took that and and gave that as an example. I remember Izzy going to daycare, and she came home, and she would like yell at me at two and a half, and be like, "Get away from me!" And I was like, we don't say that in our house. Like, we don't, that's her. Where is that coming from? Like, where, what is happening? Like, why would you even? What happened to my innocent little two-year-old? And you know what? And and it was really interesting. Like, the the woman who provides her daycare um, ended up, you know, that child was not going to be at daycare anymore because of the behavioral issues. And they probably needed someone like you in their life to teach, right? They, that's what needed to happen. It wasn't, like, I never it think wasn't kids, the are child's kids are never bad. No. It, it's, and and it's parents aren't parents. ever horrible either. No, no. Right? It's, it's never, never the parents' the fault. fault. Yeah. Because I love that you say that. Out. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, I love, uh, let's go into that because you just said it's never the parent's fault. And often we feel like it is our fault or they don't want to deal with the behavior because they think they're going to be blamed for it. Right. Right. The parents don't want to deal with the behavior or, or ask about it or inquire because they think it's going to be their fault. And it might be an embarrassing thing for them, or it might be something that, that rocks them a little bit, but it's, it's just generational. And it's things that, that we need people like you to come in and just be like, oh, just do this instead, or just here's some tools sure. in your back pocket that you can use in this situation. Have you heard about, have you thought about this? Or what if you approached it from this way? And, and the thing is, is that sometimes, and because of the, the population I tend to work with, sometimes parents are doing all the right things. They are, right. but the behaviors coming out of their child, they're just not ready for yet. We haven't met that child, that underlying foundational skill. We haven't built yet not the parents fault but they take it on and like even at the grocery store one of my favorite stories to share with parents is like when you see a child melting down and a parent doing like rather than judge them ask them how you can help what can mm -hmm. i do to help yeah your child's running down the thing i was like how can i help she's like can you grab him at the other end like just stop don't let him pass deal got it got she's it like, i got you mm -hmm. thanks thanks for that i'm like i got it i deal with these guys all the time like you're doing everything you got. You, you remained calm. You didn't chase him. You didn't like you, you had all the skills, but in the end we can't control our children. No, nor should we try really. No. <laughs> right. Like we can't control anybody else. We can educate them and help them to make their own decisions, but we can't control them. No, no. And, and if you do try and control them again, it makes a bigger issue in their it, later in their youth into their teenage years, because they're going to rebel against that because yeah. you didn't give them the choice to make their own decisions. For sure. Yeah. So Katrina, where can people find you? Where can, I know you have a group. What's your group called on Facebook and where um, can people find you? Okay. So, um, inspirational futures, the tagline actually is nutrition, learning, love, and success. I love it. And you can, uh, if you just do inspirational parent group, 
you should be able to find my free parent group. If all else fails, find Katrina Mallon, say hello, I will connect you to the rest of it. Um, Inspirational Futures Katrina Mallon Consulting on YouTube. Come check it out. There's tons of resources on there. Oh my gosh. Everybody go subscribe. If you're a parent, go subscribe to Katrina's YouTube because even if you watch a video a week, if you get 1% better every time you watch something, like that could be 10% better in 10 days. That could be 100% better in 100 days. And we all have stuff that we're dealing with as humans. And so if we can learn how to manage our emotions and learn how to communicate properly with our children, then we set the foundation for the rest of their lives. The other, the other thing I want to throw out there just to throw the heads up is that a lot of my stuff on the YouTube channel says it's autism. It's this, it's that, but because I'm a relationship development intervention consultant, it's based on the natural guiding relationship that happened between, between a parent and a child. So developmentally, wherever your child is, this stuff still applies. It's not different. It's not like some random thing. This is built on what naturally occurs between a parent and a child on an everyday basis. Just with autism, we have to tweak it a little bit to get it started again. Right. So, right. so you when you look clarity. at these these videos, you're like, oh, that doesn't apply to me. It it does. It's just to hit my target market and make sure the parents who need to hear it and need to tweak things. I've stuck a lot of like autism in there or ADHD in there, but this stuff actually applies to every child oh, and every you. parent relationship. Thank you so much. You are such a wealth of knowledge. I, I, I'm so grateful that you've come into my life. Like I said, every time I catch a video, I learn something and I'm like, Oh, I should do it this way instead, or I should do it that way instead. And it's really shifted. You know, that's, that's one of the things that I take pride in is how conscious I am as a parent and, and being able to help her. Why do we do that? Because of our upbringing, right? Because, and, 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 and when I say that, I don't say it to be detrimental to our parents' generation to no. our parents because it wasn't their fault. It's the things that we learn. That's what evolution is. Right. That's what evolution is. It's just no one was doing things this way no. 20 years ago. No. And now we can share information faster than we ever could before. Like the stuff that you are sharing today, the, the techniques and all that kind of stuff, those are things that you didn't have access to before. And so now we share them like this so that the, the information can get around. And so that, you know, if, if you need someone like Katrina, you can find her because maybe you didn't know that there's anything called a relationship development intervention consultant, which I'm still reading off a piece of paper because <laughs> I'm like, make sure that you get it right, Christina. Um, right. So like, maybe you didn't know that you needed one or that they were available to you or that that was even a thing. And so yeah. that's why I think these conversations are so important. I really appreciate you being here today, Kat. I just, I think you are such a wealth of knowledge and you are just the perfect person to have in your back pocket if you're a parent oh well thank you and I Uh and I really want to thank you for having me and remind parents that you're not alone in this whether you're reaching out to a therapist or a consultant or your best friend or or a conscious parenting group whatever that might be just know that you're not alone in this because somehow we we grow up thinking that we're we have to do everything by ourselves I don't know where that comes from. I'm sure some psychologist could tell me. But uh, do you know what I mean? Like, you are not alone in this. And this is, this is like meeting you and the amazing group of the tribe of women and men that, that I have been exposed to because of, of how we met has really taught me that it's okay to help. Even me, the consultant, <laughs> reaches out for help. Absolutely. I, I don't know it all. But I do know where to look. Yes. I do know who to ask. And I have to say, Kat, you are so coachable. Like you are so somebody that is open to listening and learning and and developing. And that's, you know, if you are somebody that is willing and coachable and you want to learn, you can, you can change, you can change the projection of your life. You can change the projection of your family relationships and your life. You can get some insight into why you are the way that you are and why you might have a relationship different within your parents, with your parents, right? Like there are so many things that you can come to see. And is it easy No, it is not easy. None of it is easy. Taking the extra 25 minutes to sit on the floor in the middle of the grocery store or wherever you were at school, like that is not easy when you've got things to do. But again, long-term investment and learning how to parent and, and discipline and be there as a support network for your kid is one of the most important things that you can do as a parent. Exactly. And 
the other thing that I will throw in there is that as you teach your child a growth mindset, you'll be admi- you'll be surprised at how much more you're adopting of that growth mindset. Right. I can learn. I can change. I do have the power. Yes, absolutely. Right? So love it. Thank you so much, Kat. Have an amazing day. Thank you for being here. We'll do this again. If you're not following her, go follow her now. She is amazing. And uh, we'll see you soon. Excellent. Thanks so much, Christina. Bye, my friend. Bye.